Ejection seats, a pilot's last resort if he or she is in danger, may save the pilot's life. And well, the Air Force wants to keep them that way, alive and safe. Here, at the vertical deceleration tower with the 711th Human Performance Wing on Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, John Berman and his team are reproducing the intensity and duration of G-forces experienced during an ejection sequence. During the, the deceleration phase, which again, even though it's deceleration, downward motion, we're actually simulating an upward ejection. We're trying to simulate the head accelerations, the neck loads, the spinal loads um, that occur during that high-speed ejection and determining if the ejection seats that we're interested in will be within safe limits that the Air Force has established over the years. Today's test, about 10 Gs on a mannequin that they call the lightest occupant in service. It's a 103-pound mannequin and we use that mannequin to simulate the response of the small crew member um, in an ejection sequence. In the 1990s, when the Pentagon opened up more specialties and assignments to women, the Air Force may have gotten more pilots, but to engineers, that meant meeting the challenges of adjusting for new height and weight requirements and doing away with the one-size-fits-all way of thinking. As we progress through generations and different sizes of humans to include now the female pilot force and smaller males, we can test in these ejection seats, reproduce those forces, and ensure the safety of the design down to the sizes and up to the max size of current ejection seat occupants. The data collected from these tests will go on to develop future safety standards for tomorrow's aircraft. For Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, I'm James Truitt.